everybody so I had a request for a video on how to know if your serger seams are sewn on correctly or what your settings should be so that is what this video is going to be about if you have any questions about anything please just feel free to leave them in the comments below or if there's any patterns you want to see drop them down in the comments i probably either have the pattern or i can get it and i'll make a video for you so let's get into it so first let's talk about the different needles you need to make sure that you're using the correct needle size and type for whatever project or fabric you're working with i typically use stretch fabrics so i typically use a size 90 14 needle stretch needles have the same tip as a ballpoint needle but they help with skip stitches so while i have seen people recommend the size 1812, it just did not work for me so i went with 90 14. Your needles are going to be color coded with two colors. The top is going to be the fabric type and the bottom is going to be the size. So this needle has a yellow and a pink bar. So it's a stretch needle size 7511. The needle will also have the size engraved at the very top. Now for universal needles, there will not be a top color. Instead, it will have no color across the top, and then the color underneath is going to be your needle size. So this one has no color in green, this one has no color and orange. So the needle I typically use has yellow and blue, so that means it's a stretch needle size 90-14. If you're just starting out, buy an assortment and try them out. I found a really great chart that helps identify your needles, so I'll leave this in the description. In your serger, this dials your left needle, right needle, upper looper, and lower looper. And it does have a little diagram under each dial, just kind of showing you where those threads will be. So your first dial is going to be your differential feed. This one's going to be your stitch width. And the middle one is going to be your stitch length. Now for your differential feed, there are going to be two sets of feed dogs under your presser foot and that is what controls the movement of fabric under that presser foot. So this dial controls the movement of both the front and the rear feed dogs. So when this is set at one, your feed dogs are moving at the same speed. When the differential feed is set at less than one, your front feed dogs are going to move slower than the rear feed dogs, stretching your fabric as it is sewn. This is effective on lightweight fabric that may pucker. When it's set at greater than one, the front feed dogs move faster than the back, and that gathers the fabric as it's sewn. This helps to move any rippling when surging stretch fabrics. So when it is set at 0.7 to 1, that is when your fabric is pulled tight, preventing thin materials from puckering. When it's at 1, that is your normal sewing. When it's at 1 to 2, that is when your material is gathered or pushed together, preventing stretch materials from puckering. So I typically have mine set anywhere between 1 to 2. I have my serger set up with different color threads so that you can actually see where those threads are going to be when you're sewing. Red, navy, white, and black, and my serger is set on 444. And the fabric I'm using is a four way stretch knit. So, this is what a correct seam should look like. Your two looper threads should be sitting directly on top of your seam like this. Now, if for some reason those threads are sticking up above the top of your seam, then they might be too loose and you need to tighten them. I thought this would be a good visual using the different color threads so that you could actually see what it should look like. There are a bunch of different things that could happen to make your seam not perfect. So I'm going to include some charts and I'll leave the links in the description. This is going to be an example of your upper loopers being too low. So I'm setting these on two and I'm going to use a stretchy four way stretch knit. So as you can see here, both of my looper threads are too loose and they're sticking up above the fabric. So here you can see the balanced tension. 
The second one, our lower looper setting is too high. So you can see it's pulling on the underside. The next one is the lower looper too low. Next we have our upper looper being set too high and our upper looper being too low. You could also have your right needle too high or too low, as well as your left needle being too high or too low.